The Fairy Rotodyne was a remarkable hybrid aircraft developed in the 1950s by the British manufacturer Fairy Aviation Company. A blend of a helicopter and a fixed-wing airplane, the Rotodyne was envisioned as a compound gyroplane or gyrodyne capable of vertical takeoff and landing like a helicopter while also cruising at airplane-like speeds. Despite its promise and early success, the project was ultimately shelved but it remains a fascinating chapter in aviation history often cited as an ahead-of-its-time precursor to modern VTOL aircraft concepts. The concept for the Ferry Rotodyne emerged during a period of rapid post-war aviation innovation. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, military and civil aviation stakeholders were exploring the next leap in aircraft versatility. Vehicles that could overcome the limitations of fixed-wing runways while providing greater range and speed than helicopters. The British government was encouraging experimental and cutting-edge designs, often funding unusual aircraft. Ferry had already gained experience with rotary-wing aircraft through the development of the Ferry Gyrodyne, a smaller experimental rotorcraft that flew in 1947. The Gyrodyne laid the technological groundwork for what would become the much larger and more ambitious Rotodyne. The Ferry Rotodyne was in design and function a compound gyroplane. It combined a large four-bladed rotor for vertical lift with fixed wings and propellers mounted on stubby wing pylons for forward thrust and lift during cruising. The rotor had a diameter of 90 feet. During vertical flight like takeoff and landing, it was driven by compressed air and fuel fed through tip jets at the ends of the rotor blades. These tip jets eliminated the need for a tail rotor like in helicopters because they produced no torque that required counteraction. In cruise flight, the rotor was not powered. It auto-rotated freely while lift was primarily provided by the fixed wings and propulsion came from the wing-mounted turboprops. Two Napier Eland three turboprop engines, each producing about 2,805 shaft horsepower, powered the aircraft. These engines drove both the propellers for forward thrust and a compressor system that supplied air to the rotor tip jets during vertical flight phases. The Ferry Rotodome measured 17.83 meters in length and stood 5.36 meters tall. It had an empty weight of approximately 24,500 pounds and a maximum takeoff weight of 33,000 pounds. In flight, the Rotodyne could cruise at around 190 miles per hour, 306 kilometers per hour, and had an operational range of roughly 450 miles or 725 kilometers. It was capable of reaching a service ceiling of about 10,000 feet. The Rotodyne's fuselage was boxy and robust, designed to carry 48 to 50 passengers or 3,600 kilograms of cargo. It featured large side doors to facilitate loading and unloading of both people and freight, making it ideal for short-haul urban or intercity routes. The flight deck housed two pilots and instrumentation included standard airplane and helicopter controls. During vertical flight, the aircraft behaved more like a helicopter. In cruise, it was flown like a fixed-wing aircraft. The first and only prototype designated XR-942 made its maiden flight on November 6, 1957 from the Ferry Aviation Airfield at White Waltham. It demonstrated the intended VTOL capabilities successfully and progressed into further test flights that validated the hybrid design's practicality. By 1958, the Rotodyne had completed public demonstrations and received considerable attention. It performed in several air shows and government evaluations, and even won the Royal Aeronautical Society's Award for Technical Innovation. There was substantial early interest in the Rotodyne's commercial potential, especially from British European Airways and New York Airways in the United States. Its ability to operate from city centers land vertically, and connect directly to urban hubs without the need for airports or long runways promised revolutionary changes in short-haul commuter travel and urban logistics. Despite its promise, the Rotodyne faced several challenges that ultimately led to its demise. The most critical issue was excessive noise from the rotor tip jets, especially during takeoff and landing. Measured at over 113 decibels, the high-pitched screech was deemed unacceptable for urban operations, ironically, one of its biggest selling points. Noise mitigation efforts failed to reduce the sound to a level tolerable for city center use. The British government was instrumental in funding the project, but began scaling back financial support in the early 1960s, especially after the merger of British helicopter companies into Westland Helicopters. The Ministry of Aviation demanded concrete commercial orders to continue funding, but British European Airways hesitated due to the noise problem and technical uncertainties. The tipjet system, while innovative, was fuel-inefficient, especially during hover. 
Maintenance and operational costs were projected to be higher than conventional helicopters. In 1960, ferry aviation was absorbed by Westland Aircraft as part of a government-led consolidation of the British aerospace industry. Westland, which had its own helicopter design, showed lukewarm interest in continuing the roto dyne program. By 1962, the project was officially cancelled. No further development occurred, and the prototype was eventually scrapped despite a strong campaign by aviation enthusiasts to preserve it.